Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for December 14th through 18th. I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. Move along. Okay. (laughs) So we do have a few announcements. We are doing a watch party for a California Christmas on Wednesday, December 23rd at 8.30 p.m. You can go to our website, pier54podcast.com. There's a little tab that says, for the fans, there's a little drop-down box. It'll say, just click on the link and it'll take you to where you need to go. So you do have to download the, it used to be called Netflix Watch Party, and now it's called Teleparty. Okay. So you have to download that extension or whatever. I just downloaded it for the first time, so please do not email us or message us questions because I don't know. <laughs> I've never done it before, so <laughs> we are learning Here's together. Hoping this works too. But you can also find the information on our Facebook page. We actually created an event and we have changed the name of our group because as we've mentioned before, we had all the best intentions of doing a book club and then it just fizzled. Books take a lot of extra time. They do. And, and then coordinating with everyone else's schedules, especially as we ran into the holidays, no one has time for that. Right. And I like to read outside of it. So not that I don't love General Hospital, but I like to not just, I like to read things other than General Hospital. As you can see, I picked up six new books this week at the library <laughs> because we had a pen. Actually, I've had them as requested. And uh. Now they take forever to arrive because they quarantine the books. Yes. So Which is so funny. I know it's better to be safe than sorry, but absolutely. It's so funny. I'm sorry you can't have this book. It's quarantining right now. Exactly. I mean, it is what it is. And then this week we're going to be posting on our social media asking for your favorite moments of 2020. So be on the lookout for that. And a non-general hospital announcement. Did you see that all my children is getting a I spin-off? Did. I did. Is it definite? Like it's happening? I saw it. Okay. I read something. I I don't have the source to cite, but they're supposed to be getting a primetime show, Pine Valley. I can't wait. But I want David (laughs) Hayward. We have created this storyline. Maybe he can start there, and then that will be the perfect reason for him to cross back over. (sighs) Please. It would be beautiful. Because our storyline involving him wraps things up, too. Yes. So (laughs) Finally. And then he can just leave, and then he can go to Pine Valley. There you go. Oh, no, but he better not take Anna with him. No. (laughs) I think you're getting ahead of yourself. Step one, verify that this rumor is true. Exactly. But I think that it is. It seemed, I mean, it was all over the place. You couldn't not see it, even if you were trying not to see it. So I'm hoping they are correct. Yep. So like we've done the past couple weeks, how do you feel about the picking out of a... I feel like it keeps us moving along on topic better because sometimes we go a little off. Yes. Okay. So something we're adding a little bit of this week is we're going to actually summarize... Quick summary, just because we realize sometimes people don't actually watch the show, and we even say that you should be able to listen to our show as a recap. Yes. And then our discussion. But we don't really necessarily always do the recap. We don't actually say what happened. So we're going to try this. Yes. So we're going to see how this goes. You want to go first? Sure. Maxie and Sasha, insurance liability for deception. I love the conversation. So they were at the Metro Court. Maxie has to talk to Sasha about, we still want you to be part of Deception, but you really can't be part of Deception if you're going to keep going with all these drugs. So they have a very nice conversation about what's expected of Sasha, and she agrees to all of Maxie's terms because she does not want to be out of all of the Deception stuff. But I really liked that Maxie remembered all of the lucky stuff. Yes! Because she was telling Sasha that, she had made mistakes in the past by helping Lucky with all of his drug addiction and that she would not do that for Sasha. She needed to help her stay clean. Right. And that shows quite the maturity and growth that Maxie yes. has done because old Maxie would have not said it in such a concerned way. Right. She would have been like, well, Lucky got addicted and then we had an affair and so he got me to get him pills. Yes. No, Maxie definitely had a leading. Oh, she definitely. Yeah, she takes Heart. responsibility now. Exactly. So, good job, Maxie. I basically had the same thing, except for I said, 
I hope she throws that makeup artist or whoever it was, designer, under the bus. Right. For, I mean, that's who they have on their team handing exactly. it out. So it's not just, it can't just be Sasha. Right. Part of the conditions was that Sasha didn't have anyone bring her anything, that it was all their people. But it's not going to solve that problem if your people are who's supplying the drugs. Right. Right. Yeah, that was a short, but that's actually how Monday started. So that's kind of yeah, that funny that you drew that first. Okay. Shake this up. Go with yellow. I have all multiple color. Oh, God. <laughs> so we go from the shortest storyline of the week to the longest. Oh, Julian. <laughs> I don't feel like he was the longest storyline. I just feel like they drug it out. Every day you got a little snippet, and then it was like, would you just finish it? Okay, so we start with Julian getting shot in the alley. Sonny approached him on Friday, mm-hmm. had the gun on him. But it wasn't Sonny that shot him. No. It was some other guy came out of nowhere and shot Julian. And then, of course, Jason and Sonny shoot out, whatever. And then they're like, wait, where did Julian go? Because Julian did fall down. Yes. And then Julian somehow escaped and somehow made it to New Jersey. Uh Uh-huh. No, no, no. He was in New Jersey first. No, he wasn't. No. He was in some alley. And then he got to New Jersey because then Sonny and Jason met with Brick. And they were like, yeah, they have this technology now that they will scan social media against active security footage or something like that. Oh, you cannot commit a crime now, guys. (laughs) And I meant to look that up. Darn it. I bet it's true, though. I I mean, if they're talking about that. Side note, Stephen A. Smith was on Stephen Bradford's podcast, not this past week, but the week before. He is so much fun to listen to because he's a diehard, lifelong General Hospital fan. Ooh. So he's not just a sports guy that got a cameo. He is a Fan. I will have to listen. So it's a really good interview. Anyway, back to Brick. So then that's how they found him in the bus station. Yep. And in the meantime, Julian's being haunted by Duke. Duke, Connie, and Alexis. I Yeah. I didn't like those choices. Oh. I thought the Kate one was weird. Okay, Kate is Connie. You can go back and listen to our 411 about that. Yes. We have not done one about Duke. I feel no. like that would also take a very long time. That would be really good, though. <laughs> that would be right. a YouTube black hole. That'd be a good one. But we have stuff planned out for the next couple weeks, so we can't do it. Okay. Then Sonny and Jason show up at the bus station and have a shootout again because another guy. Mm-hmm. And first of all, Cyrus is hiring hits through text. Right. We can figure out what a gun emoji and the cross-eyed. Right. Emoji and the money symbol. I, I think that might... I wasn't sure why they were using emojis. Like, I understand you shouldn't talk about sensitive things on your phone or in text because then the police can totally go back and trace that. They can trace emojis too. Even so if you delete it. I don't understand. Yeah. And then after the shootout, Julian again escaped. Yep. And winds up on... It's not supposed to be the same footbridge that we see all the time, but we know that it is. Totally was. And we'll just talk about that as we go through it. So let's start with, okay, the first shootout in the alley was just kind of whatever. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about him being visited by Duke, Kate Connie, and Alexis. I totally thought that Duke worked with it because Duke was so screwed over by him. I just, I don't understand Connie. I do because... It was from his actions that she was killed. Right. That's why Ava killed her. And that he never took responsibility for his part. He didn't pull a maxi and was like, you know what? Yeah, I really did influence her in a bad way. He turned his life around. But anytime he needed her. Oh, yeah. To do his bidding. 100%. Yeah. And then Alexis, I just didn't like because she's not dead. I know. You can't have a ghost that's not dead. That was the weird one. Okay. And I honestly really wish... He had just died then. Yes. I wish that he had been like, you know what? I really was not a nice guy, even though he tried, he changed, he changed. He did become a nice guy. He did. But, ish. (laughs) I mean, other than the baby napping and bombs, he was okay. But they should have just let him die. Mm -hmm. Instead. No, instead they left him sitting on a bench, bleeding out, where strangers are like, hey, are you okay? You don't look so good. And then he misses his bus because he had passed out by like, 10 minutes he misses his bus. Come on, have it be hours. Don't have it be 10 minutes. Exactly. Because he would have probably heard, last call for... Right. They the announced caucus that. caucus or whatever, I don't wherever know where he, he was going. going. Yeah. He's going to wind up on the Pennsylvania line, though. <laughs> but, 
So then Sonny and Jason show up just as another shooter is trying to take him out. And the detective says, what happened to those other people? Diane shows up to get Jason out of it and asks, what happened to those other two people? You have video footage. You didn't see on that footage that Jason and Sonny came in together and held him and were like walking him out. That didn't make any sense. Then Sonny meets up with Julian on the bridge. (laughs) That's not the footbridge. That's under construction. I really liked it because they had some words. You know, Sonny was calling him out for everything. Everything (laughs) that everyone else had just recapped for him. But then he gave him a way out. Yes. But Julian knew if he went and confessed everything and got Julian or got Cyrus in trouble that he was going to be dead anyway. Right. So So what's the point? Yeah. I don't know. Except for that would have been redemption for kidnapping for being part of the baby switch with Wiley. It would have been, you know what? Yeah, but if you're going to die, do you care? (laughs) If he really, truly, honestly just did it for Lucas and just, yeah, I think so. I think it would have been like, you know what? Let me do one last good thing. And at least Sonny could say, I think Sonny would say, you know, he knew that he was at the end, but he did this with Cyrus. Instead, Julian passes out. Sonny goes to take his pulse and Julian charges him. Did you gasp? I was (laughs) like, where did that come from? (laughs) It was definitely played out well. I thought they were going to fall over the edge. That's what I that thought, too. Then. That would have made more sense. But yes. instead, no. They had to fight a little Julian, more. Yep. And then Julian crawls away, and the bridge collapses just as Jason's coming up. Yes. <laughs> Jason, Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. Jason made a good attempt. He, like, ran to the end. No, Sonny. And then it closes out. Yep. Done. That, that was a good it cliffhanger, was. though. Good cliffhanger. Yep. But we know Sonny's not dying. No. And we're pretty darn sure Julian is. Right. So is that the end of Julian? Is that Julian's final? I mean, I hope not. I wish that they would make the decision to keep him on and change it all around. But they have to officially kill him at some point if they're writing him off. (laughs) I'm like, do they really? I guess it's true. (laughs) I guess they don't. They could find Sunny quickly and Julian's body is just never discovered. Exactly. Because Julian's too injured to fight. So, Sonny is at least able to swim. Right. And Julian now, at this point, has two bullet two. holes mm-hmm. in him. <laughs> two bullet holes. Not two gunshots. He's going to sink. Two bullet holes. <laughs> what did I say? Bullet holes. He has two bullet holes in him. He well, has... what did I say? That's what you said, instead of he was shot twice. Well, he has two bullet holes in him. That's what <laughs> the result of a shot is, is a bullet I hole. I think it's funny the way you said that. Go ahead. That's <laughs> what happens when something gets shot. There's a bullet hole. Okay. What would you say? Two shots? Two shot holes? It's bullet no, hole. No, I just would have said he's shot twice now. Okay. I just would have worded it different. Go ahead. I don't know. So I think that they're going to theorize that there's no way that he could have possibly right. swam and gotten himself to shore and rescued they sh- himself. should learn not to keep doing that, though. Well, no I one mean, ever actually dies. Sometimes they do. Okay. Stone, as we discussed, will yes. always be dead. That is very true. But in cases like this, they leave it right. open. No body, you don't know yet. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes there is a body and there's... They that's still very come true. Back. Jake. That's very true. I think that's all I have for good. Julian. It was, yeah. He was, it was good this week. I love that they keep going back to Megan Ward, though, for Kate. Yes. She was Kate. Connie. Whatever. Alexis. Tracy called the cops on her for drunk driving, and then she refused the breathalyzer from Chase. And that pretty much sums it up. I did not think that was the direction they were going in. Like we talked about last week, I thought they were going to stage some kind of accident, not just her. And I thought that Tracy was going to get her pulled over for a DUI. Yep. So you were right. Good job, Shannon. Gold star for you. Whoop, whoop. Poor Chase. I know. He's like, seriously, just take the breathalyzer. Right. And she refused and he explained all of the consequences and she didn't care. She was sticking with that. Right. But I feel like she is a good enough attorney. She's going to be able to argue her way out of that. Right. And now she knows that Tracy's after her for real. Right. Oh, and that was one thing we didn't talk about last week when Tracy offered her that job. And she's like, I don't know if you found out I wasn't an attorney. And she's like, what, you lost your brain too? I liked that. Yes. I thought that was a really good compliment on it Tracy's was part. a really good compliment. But then Tracy should realize that she's not that dumb. Right. I don't know, though, but Alexis blacked out. So she really could. But she think. knows she only had two or three drinks. But could she possibly think? She didn't just have two or three because she chugged that vodka before they left. And that was, that was a couple drinks. That was a couple shots in that glass. I don't think she was drunk, drunk. I don't know. Maybe she. 
I mean, now, drunk, drunk, but not blackout drunk. Like, shouldn't be driving drunk? Absolutely. Right. But blackout drunk, I don't think she was there yet. We shall see. Yes. Maybe that could be the thing that actually turns her around and Tracy's plot works. And she's like, wow, I blacked out and don't even remember all that. Maybe. But I think she's just going to get angry and blow everything up because Darn it. she's mad. And that's absolutely what I would do. <laughs> so I'm with you on this one, Alexis. <sighs> But yeah, that was like a just a little snippet. Like, yeah, didn't take up much of the week. All right, so I'm just going to go back to Sonny and Jason. But basically, we talked about all of it anyway. So I will pull another one because I just wrote, oh, the one thing I did say was thanks, Brick, for remembering Dev. And can't believe he still hasn't had a funeral. I so know. Just going to throw that out there. <gasps> okay. I'm really glad we're pulling these kind of in order of that they happened-ish. Laura and Curtis. I can't remember if anything was on Friday's episode, but Curtis took Laura to the home medical care facility right. that Florence Gray is located. And in Vermont. Got her in Vermont, yes. And got her admitted, which poor Laura having to fake being in a catatonic state, but again, she did a good job. She did a really good job. She was acting job. the first time too, though, so yeah, it works. Curtis did not change his name. He's nope. like, I'm Dr. Curtis Ashford from Port Charles. Dude, they are going to Google that. Uh-huh. But turns out that Kevin actually helped get them admitted. Which I was surprised at because I thought that Kevin would, no way. Right. Same, 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 same. And so they got Laura admitted into the hospital. I guess, is it a hospital or is it just a, it's a long-term care facility. Yes. No, Lulu's in a long-term care facility. Whatever kind of home Miss Gray is in, in Vermont. I would say long-term care. Possibly. I don't know. But that would have been a better disguise if they had had, hey, let's transfer Lulu to this long-term care facility in Vermont. Oh, look at there. Two doors down is a woman named Florence Gray. It has to be a long-term care facility because that's how Cyrus ended up telling Laura about it, was if you don't like the one that Lulu's in, there are some really good ones, like this one in Vermont. So they have to be somewhat the same level of care. Okay. That's, I'm sticking to that story. Okay. Makes sense to me. But yeah, so they did that to learn more about Florence Gray, and we'll get into all of that on another post-it. I love Even Curtis. Even though they're not post-its. But they're not post-its. No. But I love Curtis. Away from Jordan, which we'll get into later. But him by himself, he played that character perfectly. I also would have changed my name, but I guess that wouldn't work if Kevin had to write up whatever. It would be really nice if he and Sam, now that Sam is like... Yeah. Ditching Jason or moving away from Jason or whatever. But that might be from. dangerous work for Sam to get into if she's all about, she's protecting our kids. True. So Sam used to be a PI and she and Curtis had Ashford and McCall. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about. This is perfect. Laura, Mark, oh and Curtis. <laughs> Martin loves his mom. He was so sweet. So we see Laura gets into the room. What's her name? Florence. Florence. Gets into Florence's room and is... Just kind of staring at her because the woman's sleeping. There's not much to do. And then she hears someone coming, so she hides in the bathroom. And then Martin comes in and starts talking about how he bought this cake and no one up here knew how to make it because it's a southern cake. And you could just see him beaming with he was the love so for his soft mom. And he was. He was. Oh, I loved it. He's so nice. And then Laura comes out of the bathroom because she realizes she's going to be discovered because he says he needs to go get water. And he kind of asks her, what the heck are you doing here? But he's very nice about it. He was not angry. He and does didn't not get call. riled up. I think that's definitely mm-hmm. his yeah. character is he just. Right. Explain yourself. Let's have a conversation. And she started explaining it. And then they went through their family history and realized that they are half siblings, which he was not as shocked as I thought that he was going to be. But I don't think that he knew. I don't think he knew either. I was okay. going to ask you, like, do you think. Yeah. No, I, I don't think that he knew. But that. he knew all about his dad's infidelities. Yes. So I think it was kind of, because who knows, perhaps there are more out there. Oh, no. So. <laughs> I am not ready to find this family connection. And then we have Cyrus announces their relation. So, yeah, Cyrus shows up and Martin's like, not mad. Cause it's he knew. Florence's birthday. Yes. So that's why they came. Yes. Right. Yes. So he's not mad that Cyrus is there. He's just kind of annoyed because Cyrus seems to want to play hero. When we all know that he gets his money through awful resources. So then they 
discover that obviously they're half siblings also, but he is not surprised. And he's like, yeah, I knew that. I was waiting for you to catch up. I've been planting all these seeds for months right. and you haven't caught on. Right. So, oh, and they said that he killed his dad. Yeah. That was crazy. But he's adamant that he didn't. Yeah. So I think, I don't know. I, I definitely don't like what Cyrus does. I definitely stick with, he's he's not Valentine. He's not you know how we give, we don't give Valentine a pass, but right. you can see the hurt child inside of Valentine when he's talking about certain things. Yes. I mean, he was angry. Right. He's like, yeah, I drove away mad. And I'm sorry, if someone admits half of what you think is true, you have to kind of assume that the whole thing's true. Right. If he's admitting, yeah, we got in a fight that day, you know, I drove away angry and yes, I hit him, but it was not intentional. Yes. No, I believe Especially him. with the passion. Like, I... I do believe that it was not intentional for him to kill his dad. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think he would have had that same passion with it. He would have been like, yeah, no, I didn't do that. And just kind of moved on. So I had the weirdest thought while I was watching the whole thing. Okay. Have you ever seen The Year Without a Santa Claus? No. (gasps) What? (laughs) I'm going to say that quietly because I know she's going to yell at me. No. So you don't know Heat Miser and Snow Miser? Madeline, do you know the Heat Miser and Snow Miser? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Listen, girl. Your mom needs to show you the year without a Santa Claus. There's these two guys, Heat Miser and Snow Miser, and their mom is Mother Nature, and they fight against each other. Long story short, there's they, they basically bicker back and forth, and that's what it reminded me of. I was like, oh, I'm like Laura's Mother Nature. That's awesome. I'm really disappointed. I'm very sorry. I mean, it's from before we were born, so it should have been one that you watched growing up. Yes, it's Rankin and Bass. Sorry. Have you ever seen Rudolph? Yes, I've seen Rudolph. Well, this is on Thank the same you. level. Yeah, even Madeline was like, yeah. This is on the same level. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, <laughs> anyway, there is a part of that movie where they're bickering back and forth, and that's just what it reminded me of, was the Miser Brothers. Got it. And before Martin started going into the ingredients of what a hummingbird it was a hummingbird cake. you had already googled i had it. already googled of it. course you did and it's pecans i loved how he described it he's like because when laura came out she's like so what's hummingbird cake he's like pineapple and banana <laughs> and pecans and cream cheese frosting it's delicious now what are you doing here? right you know like, was, he's like why am i answering your questions before you're answering mine right he was very polite too. There was something he's like, okay, so I've entertained you coming out of the bathroom and asking about cake. Right. <laughs> What's now, up? Answer my questions. Right. Yes, I like him. But so pecan, cinnamon, banana, pineapple, and a, a thick cream cheese frosting. And so I'm kind of you're gonna make one. Kind of <laughs> curious about this. I I just might. You should make one for Wednesday's watch party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I can't eat the whole cake by myself. I'll come over and eat with you and watch with you. Okay. <laughs> but I think that's all that I have for... Oh, the one thing I did say, I was like, if Cyrus became a drug kingpin for moving once in his life, then I should be the queen of all crimes because... Yes. <laughs> I mean... You move a lot. It was... You stay in the same general area, though. No. I was born in Virginia. Oh, but that wasn't your choice to move. No. Okay, so me as an adult right. choosing to move... Yes, I have stayed. Well, no, my first move was to Boston. All right. And then I boomeranged back. That's a whole other story. (laughs) Like, I've lived in New York. I lived in all over, like, Western PA. (laughs) So. You're more exciting than I am. I have not. I, it did not say it was exciting. As a growing up, I have lived here, and that is all. But the things that have brought me to needing to move kind of stink. Oh. Okay. So. There's that. That's another soap opera. That is. (laughs) All right, it's your turn to draw. Okay. I'm just making sure that that's all that I had. I feel like yep. we covered it. Me too. It was a good scene, though. It was really. I enjoyed that entire thing, and I'm really excited about where it's going. Liesel and Squatty disposing of the body. <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> You're a door. I didn't mean to. <laughs> and Liesel talked to Franco about the voices in his head. Do you think she possibly knows that he would have Peter's voice in his head. Um, It's Liesl, so you can't underestimate anything that she knows. I I don't know. That would be a good storyline for her to if help it's, him process it out and figure out It's a Drew on. memory, obviously. Right. It's a Drew memory. But I think that it did not surprise her when she said that. Right. When he said that to her. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know how she's going to fix it, though, or change it, or do whatever. I have no idea. Because just because you were in charge of the mind clinic, or whatever it was called, doesn't mean that you actually know how to get in there and fix it all. Like, you had doctors that did that. She's the kind of woman I feel like she would have known how to do that. And that's how she became the head of the mind clinic. Okay. For her. I do agree with your statement, though, that the person in charge doesn't always necessarily know all of the jobs under Should them. they? Yes. Right. right. Do they? No. No. Hmm. But I feel like she would. I mean, maybe. I don't I don't know. I don't know where they're going to go with that. I was yeah. surprised that they killed him already. I figured right. the doctor was going to end up dead. I just did not see it coming the very beginning of the storyline. Right, because now what's Dante going to do? There's and, no more cookie pun. And Scotty just kind of let it go way too easy. Oh, okay, I'll leave. You can handle the dead body. I'll take Franco back to the hotel. Anyone who knows Liesl knows do not trust her like that. So, But it's her best friend's dad. So I don't think she's going to throw him under the bus. I really don't. I don't think she's going to throw him. Franco. I don't think she's going to throw him under the bus now. But that's information that she's going to have on him forever. And you don't know how she can twist it around later. True. So. True. Very true. I don't know. I feel like that story was underdeveloped this week. Yeah. They, like, gave you that little bit and then moved on to everything else. Right. So I don't have much thought on it because I don't Neither know where do they're I. going. I don't either. One thing I forgot to say when we were talking about Maxie is when she talked to Britt. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to throw that in there because it's a little blip also. Yes. Did she forget that she's still family with Britt? She wasn't forgetting. She was just trying she to said, find... We're going to be family soon, Britt. No, you already are. She's your nephew's or your baby's aunt. Yeah. But they haven't. Like, they are family. Nathan like, died. Paper. They weren't divorced. They didn't separate. I think she meant we're going to have more of a family relationship. They need to work on this, how they're saying these things. The way that she worded it was incorrect because they were family no matter what. But I think she meant now we're all in the same town and we have these babies that are related to you and we're going to move forward that way like as a real family, not just. Like I wouldn't consider my ex. I mean, but they're still, they're part of my family, even though they're not. My family, they're my kids' family. So, they're my family. You know, it's, I don't necessarily invite them to family things, you know, my family things. But I, I don't not consider them, they're a significant part of my life because they're my kids' family. Right. No. No. I think if any of that sounded. No. I 100% get what you're saying. I feel like it's just muddy water at that point. Like, my nieces and nephews from my ex's side still call me Aunt Amanda. Of course. And they're my nieces and nephews. But at the same time, do I see them all the holidays and buy them right. presents and hang out? Like, now play dates happen when their dad has my kids, not they're coming over. You know? So right. it just changes the dynamic. And I think that's what Maxie meant is before, yes, we were family, but you were who knows where. Right. And now you're here so we can actually have a family relationship. Yep. Is it my turn again? It's your turn. Ugh. Curtis and Jordan. Your, like, wrap-up of it is exactly right, except for I was just over it already. So you wrote Curtis, but I just Jordan wrote bullet know, points. <laughs> all of these secrets are not okay. <laughs> I feel like Curtis should have had this conversation a long time ago with her, even though he didn't even know all of the secrets that she was keeping. Yeah. So... But he knew something was up. Like, he he had a sixth sense about it. Yes. So Taggart officially came back this week. As far as everyone knows, he is not dead. And We'll get then, into all of that. Though. Yes. But this is the outcome. Exactly. So then... Um, Curtis was one of the people that found out he was alive. Right. So Jordan calls him while he's away with Laura and is like, hey, we need to talk. Don't want to interrupt you, but call me before you come just, like, flying back into town and hear all this from other people. And... He basically called her out on all of her stuff. So you lied to me about him. You lied to me about your stuff with Renault. You've lied to me about God knows what else. What the heck? And she made excuses like she always does and tried to make it sound like it was for in his best interest, which I don't really agree with because Curtis is smart enough. He could have helped. And he was a police officer. Right. So he has the background. He, it's. Yeah. There is definitely a line of confidentiality that, you know, she probably shouldn't cross. But stuff like that. 
And like he said, you saw how torn up I was over Trina. Right. She could have saved him a lot. Right. And if you kept it just between you and the other main players, then maybe. But she did bring Portia into it halfway. And I don't know who all else knows. Sunny and them and everyone else. So too many people knew that you then weren't confiding in your husband. Right. And then it ended with them, like, each on the side of the door with these looks, like... Okay, oh, that was no. such a soap opera moment. <laughs> it was such a soap opera moment, but I was, like... It was such stereotypical when you watch a show or a movie and they show a soap opera. Yes. That's what they were showing. Yep. I'm like, really, guys? Right. Stereotype. Yeah. And I didn't like it because I just wanted him to be mad and walk away because it's time that they're done. I'm over Jordan. So, I think oh, geez. that Curtis and Portia are going to get back together. Yes. Because he's going to feel so betrayed. And, and so does she. And so does she. Even though she and Taggart are divorced, they're going to find comfort in each other. Yes. I'm so. good with that. All right. All right. I approve. Okay. Totally opposite side. <laughs> then Anna Violet chase Gregory. Just all talking about the double wedding and everything. We forgot to mention Gregory reading to Violet last week was so, so cute. cute. And he was telling her stories. Yes. And it was. It was adorable. And I liked that he brought her a present this week, and she ran and put it under the tree. She didn't rip into it. Yes. Such a good child. Daddy, does fun give you a headache? (laughs) Was the best. She's so cute. She is. And when she said, Daddy and Anna are marrying Maxie and Peter. (laughs) What? No. (laughs) They're doing such a good job of writing that from a child's perspective. Yes. I wonder if maybe they sat down with her and said something and she might have just responded back and they're like, okay, that is how a child right. would interpret what a double wedding is. Totally could be because <laughs> she says it perfectly. And I love that Chase and Gregory didn't correct her. Right. And they're like, well, that's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> be very interesting. Yes, yes, it will. No, it was a super cute scene. I'm just, but then we all know how I what a plus Anna one is. And Finn. Yes. That was cute. That was cute. It was a it was cute just, scene. It, yes. Yes. It was that little bit of normal that you needed in the middle of all the crazy. Yes. That's all that I had. I just, we had to so talk cute. about her. So. That was like short. Yep. This was short there. Sorry. Super short. Trina and Portia. I don't know where to go with that one. Well, first Portia called her out for missing school or whatever. And I, yelled at Ava. I loved that Ava then called her and was like, you need to at least communicate with your mother what you're doing, where you're going. You can't just not yep. show up to school and whatever. I liked that she was part of all of that. Yes. And obviously, Portia handled it like a mom. Like, I got a call from the school. You're not where you're supposed to be. What the heck? And being concerned. But really, I think it was all about Trina this week with her reaction to missing Taggart and then finding out that he was alive and trying to process all of that and her friends being so awesome about trying to keep a little bit of reality before they found out for real he was alive. Right. So, yeah, it was all about Trina. She was awesome. I just didn't like how – I actually don't think I put it on its own separate – I don't think I put Taggart revealing himself to everybody on its own separate. So we can just talk oh. about that now. Yeah, that's fine. Because I think I put everybody else because everyone else had the reaction to it. Yes. So we'll get there. Trina and Portia came to the police station, and there was Taggart. Yes. And, like, that's how they found out. Right. You know, was... Right, they were there to report uh, Cyrus, Cyrus for talking, talking to, to her. Yes. yes. So I thought that was good, too. Yeah. So that was interesting, because that was the thing, is that Trina finally confided in her mom that right. Cyrus mm-hmm. had told her her dad was alive. Yes. But I think that Portia's going to smack him next week. Yes. Because she still hasn't reacted. No. She didn't get a chance to see him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just felt like they kind of went together because Portia didn't have a lot by herself. No. Although her look to Jordan was like, seriously? Right. You, again, you let me help you with all this crap, but you didn't tell me about this? What the heck? Right. I deserve to know that. Yes. So let's hope that I get the next. Which is definitely setting up your theory that then she'll turn around and hook up with Curtis because now she owes Jordan nothing because Jordan didn't follow through with trying to give all of the information she had. Exactly. So let's just. I'm just going to trump whatever I just pulled. Okay. And if you pull it, we're talking about it now. Okay. Mac is who, when Jordan was like, here, do you trust me to tag her? Because Trina was at the park sitting on the bench that was the memorial to. 
Okay, so I did these wrong. We should have just really just done Trina and then crossed all that bridges. So I'm sorry. So Trina was at the memorial bench in the park, saw Jordan. I thought the Taggart was going to come out then. I think she heard his voice because that was what made her start yelling, dad, dad, dad. And then she turned the corner and instead it It was was just Jordan. Yeah. And then Jordan confronts Taggart and is like, you need to, you know, we need to figure something out here. And she's like, do you trust me? And I was like, so why didn't she take him to wherever it is that he's taking her first? Or she's taking him. In the very beginning. Right. So that he wasn't all over the place. Yeah. So she brings in Mac. Right. Well, Mac showed up because that guy came to shoot. Right. At Tyler. Yes. I said that, like, all kind of weird. But a gunman showed up in the park. Yes. Yes. And then I was just like, why didn't Jordan take Taggart where Cyrus couldn't get him to begin with? Truck. Poor Mac. Right. He tore her a new one, though. She got it from all sides. This she week. deserved it. But it's nice to see that she's not just getting up. Oh, I understand why you did it. Right. No, like, you just really messed up your job and your marriage. Yep. And then they can make Mac full time, and he can actually have a real storyline again for once. Yes. Because he's good as the police commissioner. Yes. He's very good. He's very order. That's what he's supposed to be. Yes. I will be happy then. But the thing is, they walk Taggart straight through the police station. Right. Like, everybody's sitting there. Yep. No one's going to be like, hey, isn't that that's that dead, dead? dead? That's that dead detective. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, he's alive. Especially where I'm sure that... It's not uncommon. I mean, they have witness protection for a reason. Right. It's not uncommon for law enforcement to assist in keeping people safe. Right. Max should have been brought in from day one. But she said she didn't even go the right route. She called somebody else for his witness protection. It was through the program, but not, there was no paperwork for it. Like you would go through the program. Right. She's just dumb. I don't like her. I've said it a hundred thousand times. I just don't like her. And, quick note, Tagger is temporarily... Yes, and they announced it. Yes, they temporarily recast. So, the day that he was temporarily recast was the same day that Tagger debuted in 1996. Ooh! And Riel Andrews posted on Instagram that he had his annual checkup, and he is absolutely cancer-free, but he has not addressed anyone's comments asking when he's coming back. So, oh, I read something that said that he was self-quarantining because he had been like quite possibly yeah yeah he had where was he i don't had know. on facebook just yeah. the other day he was in hawaii maybe somewhere i don't know i don't know but he was not at home so he was quarantining after his travels is yes. what i had heard yes don't know if it's true but that would make me feel good because that's only two weeks and now here we go yep <clears throat> just the wrong time to be picking to- yeah not be there right could have totally done it while and he deserved to get to play that scene with trina because he had done all of the death scenes with her so it was sad that he had to miss out on that right i agree i'm sure we'll get it yeah something okay so i'll just i just wrote valentine and martin oh yeah they had a nice conversation i like that martin is really he was like okay so i'm just gonna get ahead of this yes exactly um cyrus is my brother i don't agree with what he does right i'm not his attorney Right. So here, sign on and let me still represent you. No, it was representing you again, because remember, Valentina had fired right. him. Yeah. Right. But I don't know. I just like that. I liked Martin this week. I I'm did glad to see they're really kind of starting to use him. Yes, I agree. They need to bring in a love interest, though. Yes. Although, quick side note, if they could stop redesigning the sets, like, I would much rather have Lulu than Subway Tile in the interrogation room. Right? Just throw that out there. <laughs> Very true. Yes. Carly and Joss. I so loved it. So good. Loved it. So we saw Joss come to Carly and say, hey, I don't know what to do. Trina is talking about her dad, and that's just not really realistic. Blah, blah, blah. And Carly did not technically lie to her. She just kind of talked around. around the conversation. She did not say, oh, yeah, he's definitely dead. Mm-hmm. So I like that because sometimes you have to do that with kids. And then later, after Jordan had called Carly to say, hey, FYI, the whole world is now going to know that Tiger is alive, she let Jocelyn know, yeah, actually, Trina was right, whatever, blah, 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 and apologized for having to lie to her by not giving all the information that she knew. Yeah. And then they had a nice mom conversation where Joss talked about how awesome Carly is and how she looks up to her, and Carly said, you know, I'll always be here for you, even if we're fighting, blah, blah, blah. And it was just such a cute mom moment. It was. I like that. 
And then they talked about how crazy their lights are. And, yes. But I like that Joss was like, I love everybody here. You know, I'm not planning on, because she frequently wonders, Carly frequently wonders, like, would she be better off with Jax? Right. And she and gave her that choice. Let me yep. know if you want to change something. You know, and right. Joss was totally adult about it and said, you know, I know I don't know everything that dad does. I'm sure his life isn't exactly. as squeaky clean as I like to think that it is. It's about the people I love and I'm staying here. And was, Joss was around when they thought that Jax had died. Right. But she was a baby. Yes. So. Yeah, she didn't have that. Whatever. The only thing is, Joss, if you're going to tell a friend that her dad is alive, don't text it. Right. Like, right. That's a phone call, girl. Yes. But Carly (laughs) saved that, too, because she was like, I'm pretty sure she already knows. Right. So let's finish our conversation. Right. And if she doesn't, Joss is not the one who should be telling her. Right. So. That was, it was just yes. good all around that Carly. Exactly. Yeah. It was nice. It was nice. All right. There's Mac. We already talked about him. Oh, and Trina mentioned Aunt Gia. Yes. Oh, so. they totally should bring oh, her back. I wish we had done this one before yours, but it's Carly and Jordan. Oh, Jordan assuming that Carly knew. Carly only just found out. Yep. Jeez, Jordan. Yeah. And that's another thing. She slipped up all over the place, assuming people knew stuff that they didn't know. And then not filling in people that totally should have been filled in. Yep. Yeah, there wasn't much conversation. Carly played that well. She said, what are you talking about? Yes. It was good. What do you mean? Yeah, Carly was good. She was another person that wasn't on very often this week, but every one of her scenes were good. Yes. Oh, Ryan waking up. It was just like, I don't understand. It was pointless. He woke up but didn't wake up. They said he was brain dead or whatever. And then Ava went in to check on him. I like the conversation between Britt and Nicholas. Is that that? No. Okay. So you can. Okay. Because I forgot. All right. Yep. So um, Britt sees Nicholas and kind of, again, calls him out on the, well, you just married Ava because that made sense, blah, blah, blah. And he, again, totally stepped up and was like, no, it's changed now. We're in love. Things are how they're supposed to be. And she deserves to see that Ryan's actually dead, not just assume that he could come back at any moment. He hurt her, and that's not okay. And then it progressed, like, yeah, Ryan's not actually going to wake up. But I still don't understand. Yeah. like but it's, is that a subconscious response exactly. to hearing Ava? Right. Like, that, wasn't it last week that his hand moved, or was that the beginning of this? This I think it was last week, as they were maybe. made to leave. You saw his, like, hand twitch a little bit. Yeah. And so you're still just left wondering, like, is he really? Is he not? Right. I'm over it. Right. Kill him or don't, but do something with him. Send him to a long-term care facility in Manhattan. Exactly. Bring us Lulu back. Yes. All right. The last one. Michael and Chase. In the (laughs) locker room. The week after we talk about Amanda objectifying (laughs) the guys. And that was all and I could think of. All they saw. <laughs> that was all I could think of as that scene came on. I was like, I'm going to make sure I don't use the word yum in this week's <laughs> podcast because we had just talked about it. I feel like Michael was 100% right. He's mad. He has a right to be mad. His feelings are conflicted now. Yeah. And it feels like Chase is just going to walk back in and take Willow but there's repercussions from I don't like from that. how he made it sound like Chase is that guy that always does everything for the glory. He totally does no. not. I don't think he did it like, for the glory. I think that Michael's just mad because realistically, it seems like he's going to come back and take Willow. Yeah. And you shouldn't assume that just because you give something up that you get to take it back whenever you feel like you want it again. But he totally hasn't because he's even told Willow... If you're happy with Michael, that's okay. Like, I just want you to be happy. But I think that but Willow wants to be with Chase now. And Michael's reaction is what your reaction would be. If you're scared of losing someone that you care about and you see how it all played out and it didn't have to play out that way, yeah, you're mad. Yeah. The only thing is, okay, when Michael put his hands on Chase's shoulders and was like, just take a breath. I just need you to take a breath. And then need him in the stomach yes. or whatever. Stomach, yeah. That's a vicious side of Michael that we don't usually see. Yet. No, but it's there. It is there. It's that's bad. Yeah, but that's the serial killer part. Like that. Like people always say, "Oh, they were so Ted Bundy. He was so nice and charming and everything." Oh, but 
Like, that but was you know not that cool. Michael should have anger issues because AJ had anger yeah. issues. That's his biological dad. And, and hi, Sunny, Carly. <laughs> oh, yes. And Sunny obviously has some anger issues that has raised him. And then Carly flies off the handle Yeah, way more than... But I just thought it was so weird. I felt like he was, it was being nice. He said, take a breath. There you go. It was really good. Like, I really liked the scenes. The only thing I didn't like was him accusing Chase of being, like, a martyr and yeah. knight in shining armor. I'm like, that's not your friend. But I did like that they were both like, okay, we're going to have to try to figure this out yeah. afterwards. Right. But I just, felt like it was a true interaction. It in the absolutely moment. Absolutely was. It like just the kind of scared me them. with how good he was at just take a breath. Just just take a breath. And then a knee to the stomach. I liked it. Besides the fact that they were in the locker room, I would have liked it no matter Chase where it happened. offered to get a new gym. Yes. That was very nice. I, I mean, I think that interaction had to happen, whether it was at Kelly's or totally. on the street or whatever. Yeah. So. But I like that they're also having the friends confront each other. Yes. Because that has to happen. Right. So. That's it. Did, I, did we forget anything? Oh, oh, that's the one you yeah, just threw back in. Yeah, that's the one I just threw in. Yeah. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. I think, yeah, like, the wrap-up is Laura found out that Cyrus and Martin are her brothers. Everyone found out that Tar- Taggart is back, including Trina. The stuff with Franco is just kind of like, we're going to have to see where that goes. There was no yeah. wrap-up to that storyline. And then Julian and Sunny, we don't know where they are. Yep. They went splash. <laughs> I did not see that co- coming, though. No. No, I figured Julian I thought was Julian gonna was going to Exactly. I yeah. figured that Julian was going to step back. Yes. And, but going back a couple weeks ago, I was going to be really mad if he killed himself. Because oh, yeah. I just wish that they had just let him die on the bench. With the angels, yeah. Yeah. Or ghosts, whatever. Yeah. I guess they're not <laughs> <I'm> like, angels. <laughs> they're not angels. I'm like, <laughs> but the ghosts. <laughs> so, yeah. I, th- I mean, I think that's really the wrap-up. Yeah. do to do Reality check. What's your reality? Tell me something wonderful, Shannon. I had my last closing of the year on Friday. Well, that's good. <sighs> then I started working on my taxes. Oh, high reality. Yikes. I've actually done a better job this year of doing them as I go. And it seems like I did a great job up until COVID hit. Oh, of course. And then, like the past six months, I've just really let it go to the side. Yeah. And so I just have six months of stuff to really document and I use a program called TaxBot to help me throughout the year so it's oh not okay. bad but it's I just have to upload all my receipts and categorize them my goal is to have it all done before Christmas so that way oh my gosh. after New Year's when I get all my like 1099s and my husband's W2 I can just zip it over to my accountant and be done yes so that's my exciting that's week oh my goodness uh, um, I don't know anything I feel so Boring. So boring. I did a bunch of shopping at the last minute. Oh, we were quarantining again because the kids were over at their dad's house and they had friends over. And then one of the step siblings got sick and was like really sick. And so there was a chance that it was COVID. And so we had to wait for those test results and all of that. I feel like we're in quarantine every other week. My sister keeps making fun of me. She's like, I feel like you're milking this now. You're just using it to get out of things. I'm just like, I haven't had to quarantine once. I seriously have not. I I mean, we're being extra safe. Right. You know, the chances that I would have got it were slim to none because I wasn't around her. The kids, um, only Megan had been there like through the week that she would have been the one that was most in danger or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're just not taking those chances. Absolutely. So. Luckily, the test was negative, and life is moving back on. But because of that, I didn't get out shopping the way that I thought I was going to. Mm. So Target and Walmart, with their two-day shipping, were my best friend on Thursday. When I jumped online, it was like, here you go. Thank we got to get this yeah. done. So I think I'm kind of sort of done. I don't know. I'm supposed to take the kids out today for them to shop. Because Madeline is not done, so she needs to do her shopping. Very nice. And I think that's it. Did anything else exciting happen this week, Madeline? No. no. I know one. We had a snow day. Oh, we did have a snow day. Yes, I was very impressed. Our district decided we got a bunch of snow Wednesday into Thursday, and so they decided to actually close on Thursday 
instead of making the kids go online and send out a nice email that said, go ahead and play in the snow, close your computers down, and just have a relaxing traditional snow day, yep. which was awesome. So we did. We played in the snow. Mm-hmm. I didn't play in the snow. It was cold. But the kids played in the snow, and um, they actually had a dentist appointment that day, so it was convenient because then I didn't have to excuse them for part of the day because right. they were already off. And right. Nice. Madeline has no cavities, so that was always exciting, too. Yay. And, yeah, that's pretty much I it. think our school followed suit. Did you see the letter that was sent home by, it was a county in West Virginia? Yes. That, yes. So I think that our hours followed that. Yes. But, hey, they did it. They did it. it was great. They did it, and it was fun. There, I saw lots of pictures of people with their snowmen that they had made and their different things with their kids and stuff. So I'm glad. Yes. Ooh. One of our friends made an igloo. I used to make igloos. So that was fun. Yeah. And then my daughter, she would have still had school, but on a typical when we're not in COVID remote learning, the home school district dictates because they provide the transportation. Right. So if our school district is closed, she doesn't go to school that day, even though school is in session for her. Right. So I just emailed her teachers and I said, listen, our school's closed. She's getting a snow day. Right. And they were like, cool. Oh, that's nice. You know, so that was, Aww. I was like, I'm keeping that as. Right. Because that's right. what it they would have been. been. And they had even said ahead of time that they weren't going to provide transportation before they, like, you know, how things go in steps, before they officially shut down. There was an announcement somewhere that said they weren't doing right. transportation. So, yeah. Even if she hadn't totally been, been remote there. learning, she wouldn't have been there anyway. Right. So, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. But it was nice. You're such a nice mom. Aw, thanks. So, yeah. Yeah, I really it. Yeah, preparing for Christmas takes up all of my free time, I feel like. So, nothing fun. Madeline, you excited for Christmas? Yeah. She's getting nothing for Christmas. She's been nothing but bad. You're going to get a year without a Santa Claus (laughs) and watch it. (laughs) She went to see Santa Claus. Her dad took her to the mall last weekend. and How did that go? Good. Yeah. They do a different, this, it was like a sled, and Santa was in back with a mask on, and then Madeline was in front with a mask on. But okay. Then still got to talk to him. I've seen different ones. Like, one, Santa was in, like, a plastic box, and you just had, like, a bench in front and sat down. So, they're being creative with it. At least the kids still get that. Yeah. That's awesome. Really cool. Yeah, that's it. We're boring. And we're going to actually have a bonus episode of Madeline reading us, what is it? Thingamajig Christmas. So that story that Amanda won't stop talking about every Christmas. Madeline's going to read it to us. So we'll release (laughs) it as a bonus episode so you can listen to it for Christmas. Yay. But on Thursdays, Port Charles 411, we are going to release our interview with Nathan Butler, who played Dr. Ewan Keenan. I'm going to try really hard not to say yum again. (laughs) But it was really, it was fun. That was a fun interview. He was so easy to talk to. I feel like. Yeah, and I know we say that every time, but it really was a friend conversation because we got off onto topics that were totally not GH related. Yeah, and one of his friends, Jake Miller, was yes stopped by also. So, yeah, super fun. We shall see. So join us on Thursday for that for Charles 411. Pay attention to our social media for the 2020 wrap-up. And join us for the watch party on the 23rd at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a good week, and we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at pier54podcast at gmail.com. 